And here we go. It's the fifth day of December, 2016. And this is the Good Life Meditation, an activity that I do each and every day, most of the time lately to the camera, uh, although previously just in my head. I still do it every day in my head, even if I uh, uh, don't have the camera on. Sometimes I do it in the pool <laughs> when I'm swimming. I, I measure the laps that way. Um, so let's get into it. There are uh, several components, the first of which is the affirmation of human and civil rights. Just a reminder to myself to uh, keep in mind the little guys and the smaller groups in society when making decisions aimed at improving the uh, well-being of the many. Second is the uh, three objectives. The first of these is the objective of the development of good sound principles. That's what this whole exercise is about. To remind myself of my principles and uh, uh, talk about them uh, such that I can weed out the issues and uh, maybe grow them and refine them and improve them. Two, the uh, cultivation of good emotional reactions. Big one for me. Uh, not necessarily because I'm particularly emotional, but simply because it, it yields such uh, immediate and tangible uh, benefit in my life when I'm able to indeed uh, better control how I respond to the world. So, and it's, so, so I actively pursue this and uh, I, I, can, I can experience it every day. So if there's anything that's a catalyst to keep this up, it's the increasing ability to uh, be more emotionally mature. Three, the uh, development of, uh, no, the performance of good actions. Just doing good things according to the principles that I've laid out. Let's lay those out now. There are uh, 14 and several sub-principles. The first principle is the atomic principle, which is my reminder that uh, everything in the universe is basically uh, a form of energy that's either energy itself or uh, uh, the you know matter that uh, makes up everything that's not just pure energy. Now, I'm no physicist. I hardly have any education in, in it, so I, I speak only of the highest, broadest terms here, energy and matter, which I think we can, for the most part, agree is out there. And uh, I simply want to remember that uh, none of this matter really seems permanent in any particular form, although it may be very long-lasting, like the iron at the core of the earth, I'm sure is pretty long-lasting, or the, uh, the helium that makes up the bulk of a star until it starts uh, consuming its uh, the helium into uh, still heavier elements later in its life, billions of years. But still, even after billions of years, these things do transform. But uh, far more uh, transient are the elements that uh, make us up. You know, we are speaking of the you know being made in the inferno of stars. All the uh, different elements that are used to make our bodies were formed at different times inside a nuclear inferno inside a star that then blew up and spewed it all out. So I'm really, uh, you and I are, are a collection of, uh, of uh, a hodgepodge of elements from different stars, most likely. And that uh, I want to remind myself that I'm put together this assemblage for just a moment. Uh, will soon uh, fall to pieces and uh, become something else. And that's uh, an important and useful function. More about that later uh, in this video. So the second uh, principle is the uh, principle of nature. Everything in the universe has some particular nature and it's good to recognize what that is and, and seek to abide that nature. And if it's you, then live according to your own nature. Let me see if I can see, pick something out and find its nature. Okay, these reflectors at the side of the road, they're <clears throat> pasted onto the road or glued onto the road, onto the asphalt. The nature of those things is to be uh, permanent, to, situated in, in place, firmly fi affixed, to be something that can withstand being driven over, They're designed in such a way with a, an angle on them that you can drive over them with just a little bump, but it doesn't really dislodge them. They uh, can't suffer some things, like a snowplow will take them right off. They have a purpose, which is to, an engineered purpose, which is to provide a, a reflection so you can see where the edge of the road is. Their nature is that they're made of plastic for the most part. They uh, have a particular lifespan. They may be uh, 
uh, they need to be taken off and replaced when the road is resurfaced or periodic intervals when they wear off. But for the most part, they're pretty simple. They don't have any uh, cognitive capability. They're non-sentient. <laughs> In fact, they're not even alive. And uh, they uh, are a, a clear evidence of, of a designer. Us. That is the nature of a, of a reflector. Pretty simple thing. So it's useful to ask, what's your nature? What's my nature? And if you can figure out what that is, then uh, you can maybe live a little better by al writing, aligning your life in accordance with that nature. And you can do a lot of good in that regard. You can avoid uh, a lot of problems that will uh, pop up in life that stem as a result of, of uh, not living according to your nature. And I'll get to that at the latter part of this video. Three, the principle of maturity. Maturity is the not just the an understanding of, of better ways to live, but an execution of uh, that. Having having a practice of life that uh, allows you to uh, put your understanding into purpose, into into good use. So there are two subcomponents: maturity and fortitude. Maturity is the wisdom that you actually gain, but maturity in itself isn't enough. You've got to. Uh, I'm sorry, wisdom enough isn't enough. Is Wisdom alone is not enough. You have to be able to act upon wisdom. Uh, use your wisdom. If you, you can have the wisdom, but if you don't use it, if you don't keep it, if you, if you gain it, but you don't hold on to it, or if you hold on to it, but you don't use it, then it's no good. So uh, putting wisdom into a action, into motion, that's where uh, uh, maturity comes into play. Another, another shortcut to uh, mature behavior is uh, fortitude. The strength to be able to push on um, towards the better ends that we know uh, are better the better ends that we're aware of and uh, that's something you can train yourself for whereas wisdom requires a uh, years of experience of living in experience a trial and error to gain fortitude can be uh, learned in six months <laughs> go to boot camp for example I don't even know if boot camp takes six months and uh, uh, you can become a, a, a more uh, stronger and uh, determined and resolute individual when you put those two together, wisdom and fortitude, you are uh, you have a, a very formidable pair. Formidable in terms of uh, the their ability to, to help you to live a better life and to be a better example to those who uh, who you who, you, who are, you're responsible for. For example, if you're a parent, it's good to uh, live a more uh, mature life to show your kids the way. Next is the uh, social principle. Human beings are social animals. We need one another. We develop, when, when we pursue social good, we're creating a very refined and distilled form of virtue, a very potent form of good, far more uh, uh, cosmopolitan than just uh, pursuing our own, our own good. Although it's good to pursue that too. <clears throat> Next is uh, temperance. Temperance is the ability to uh, exercise restraint in our consumption. Consumption of uh, consumables like food and drink, activities like work and play, and uh, internal uh, activities such as uh, the emotions that we feel. Temperance asks us to take, consume smaller bits, have just a, a, small, a small bit of pie few uh, sips of beer, maybe a bottle, uh, you know, a good eight hours of work, not too much overtime, unless you really need to, you know, don't watch too much TV, play, play a, play a relative amount and get out and exercise, but not too much, and when you feel uh, anger, don't fly off the handle, when you feel uh, lust, temper that also, unless it's among consenting adults. <laughs> Next is uh, the sub-principle of temperance, which is uh, suffering. When you, uh, you can exercise temperance with our feelings. For example, if you're feeling uh, embarrassment or anger, you can <clears throat> moderate your response. And by, by the way, when I'm saying you, I'm, mean, I'm meaning me. I'm not trying to tell anybody else to do any of this stuff. This is just a reminder for myself to how to, how to live better. But uh, just so when I, temper, when I temper my emotions, that doesn't make the feelings of those emotions go away or lessen. 
I can still suffer them quite well and quite long and quite painfully. So temperance isn't a remedy to suffering. Temperance is simply a, uh, a, a way to moderate our external reaction to, uh, to suffering to, or, to, or to, to experiences, to indulgence, to feelings, uh, to uh, you know, hungers and appetites. It speaks back to fortitude as well, the ability to exercise fortitude to uh, control our, to restrain, to restrain ourselves. But it still, it doesn't mean that we're not going to be in pain. Suffering is, is a very real thing. You can take uh, some, of course, obviously, you can take an aspirin for a headache, but uh, sometimes you can do not so much with a, a broken heart or a, a broken spirit or a, you know, acute uh, embarrassment or a smothering depression or a, you know, wretched loneliness. Can't think of a good word for that one. <clears throat> These things are all very real pains. And I have no good answers for anybody with regard to dealing with those. I, I don't know how to deal with them very well myself. I simply uh, exercise my temperance to uh, avoid uh, uh, spreading it around. Share it as necessary. I'll share these things with my wife even my daughter at times and close friends like I have any of those <laughs> I'll even share it with a while but uh, for the most part suffering is very real and uh, for all of us and uh, a curious thing sometimes you just have to you just have to live with it now that said you know, I'm just the guy talking at a camera. So, uh, from, for the most part, the suffering that I experience is is very moderate in comparison to what I understand others do. And for the most part, I can handle it. But if you're suffering to the point that uh, it seems to be out of control, or if you're watching this and you you're at that point, or or you get to the point of you know acute depression or you suicidal thoughts, then please uh, seek after somebody to help you. Don't just listen to some guy in a in a camera driving and working in a car, I don't know anything. But I, I can tell you though that I, I do uh, appreciate, in terms of an understanding sense, your the fact of suffering, and I recognize that it is a very real thing that uh, fits into these principles most closely with the uh, principle of temperance, which allows us to uh, to get through the dark the, the dark moments sometimes. Moving on from that gloomy, gloomy view to uh, uh, <clears throat> agency and indifference. Agents are any life that exerts some will, which I guess is every life, right? Because life exerts a particular will, will upon the world. Even a, even a, a, a plant situa situated in place exerts some will upon the, wor the world, uh, interfering with the wind, uh, in grabbing up some sunlight, uh, uh, exercising its roots through the soil and through rocks and breaking things up and providing home for worms, things like that. Um, if all life are agents, pardon me, excuse me, and the things that they create are the artifacts of their agency, then when you take all that away, go to the surface of the moon, you're looking at uh, uh, a landscape devoid of all agents and all artifacts of agency and you, you come face to face with what I call the great indifference. There's only a few places on earth that you can really face down the great indifference. Um, you can't do it in nature. You can't go to a forest in a lot of nature, not nature here on earth. You can't go to a forest, you can't go to a meadow, you can't go row a boat, boat on, a rake, a, on a nice pretty lake. You can't even really get it on the sea. A couple videos back I was talking about finding it on the sea but I don't even think you can get it there the best place to, to meet indifference head-on is uh, a particular type of desert namely a moonscape they're very devoid of life and the, any life that is there is struggling appears it looks as though it's struggling and suffering and almost ready to die but there are places I know that I know that I've been there where you can go to such places and there you encounter the great indifference face on and uh, it's an awe-inspiring and fearful aspect to, to discover, to see. But you can also find it in yourself. It's, uh, I think, at the root of things, feelings like loneliness. When uh, we're facing down the uh, 
indifference of the universe when it seems that nobody cares. It's a very terrible, painful thing. So what we do sometimes is that we uh, <clears throat> invent agents to, uh, to act as surrogates where none exists. That's how we create gods and God. And uh, we ascribe God's will to uh, the, the world and to uh, God's hand, hidden hand, to the uh, unseen uh, result of, uh, the, of the unseen uh, to, to the to the results of the world that appear to be uh, uh, without any uh, life or without any agency without any purpose uh, even things like uh, the descriptive laws of nature we can ascribe those to 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 God as well but in fact what we're really doing is uh, spreading a, a layer of uh, of comforting uh, comforting meaning across a landscape that doesn't really deserve that. It's, it's an application, it's an artificial application that doesn't, that doesn't show any evidence of it being true. And uh, at least nobody's been able to uh, claim a Nobel Prize yet for uh, demonstration that uh, such claims are true. So until uh, we have good reason to think otherwise, it's, uh, it's basically wishful thinking. So beware, uh, beware agency and, and, and the indifference, and, and don't beware agency and indifference, beware the, uh, the, the, the reactionary fear of applying agency where it doesn't exist, that is so often the response to uh, indifference. Now, uh, moving on to um, <clears throat> the best seat in the house, which is uh, wherever we are at any particular time, it's a reminder to myself to, uh, this is a heck of a big crane moving along, lights are flashing. Wow, lots of wheels. Mr. Crane. Right there. Lots of flashing lights there. You see him? Not really. So, um, anyway, the best seat in the house is a reminder that, uh, let me get back over. <clears throat> to not, reminder to not want to want to be anywhere else, or not want to want to be anyone else, or not want to want to do anything, be doing anything else, but to be all right with wherever the heck I am in any situation, even if it's painful. But to strive, of course, to get out of that pain in the best way possible, in the most mature and meaningful, mature and uh, socially conscious way possible. What I mean by that is, if you're in pain, don't want to uh, throw the rest of the society under the bus, you know, in order to exercise yourself of that pain. Okay, hesitating a little bit because I, I want to come up with some examples, but the first th example that comes to mind is one that is a, is a challenging one. I'll take it on. What the heck? So, for example, I got, and I may I may end up taking my words back, but I'll give it a try. <clears throat> for example. If you're in a, in a lot of pain and you decide to, uh, that suicide is the best way to uh, alleviate that pain, it may be true, but there may be you know, very real cost in that in terms of the impact that it will have on others. And uh, see, it gets lost. I've, I, I've already done it. So it, this drifts away from the best seat in the house. It drifts away back to suffering and uh, and the like, which which is a lot of my mind lately, because it was it was it was like kind of like an aha moment over the weekend when I realized that I had I had failed to bring in that important concept within. I'd got to fourteen principles without addressing suffering, and now I finally got it in there. So I guess it makes sense that I'm dwelling on it a little bit because it is a very real thing. Humans do suffer. It's a part of life, and it deserves to be treated well. Maybe it deserves its own darn principle for that matter. But for now, I'll keep it as a part of temperance. But if it keeps coming up this way, um, asking, you know, begging to be uh, uh, addressed, then I may uh, move it into its own principle. But back to the best seat in the house. The uh, it's the ability to be all right with whatever I'm doing and whoever I, I am at any particular time, while at the same time moving forward. It sounds a little bit contradictory. It's like having... Uh, uh, satisfaction being trying to teach yourself to be content with where you are now well still not being content enough that you want to keep moving forward but 
it's, if it does in, in principle, it does. It sounds a little bit contradictory, but in practice, it works. I know it because I do it. You know, like I don't want to be going to work right now, but I'm okay. Well, I'm still, but I'm still, you know, working towards a better end. I'd like to um, improve things, improve my, my, the situation of my family, get enough saved up that I can retire. But in the meantime, I'm still going to go to work, and I'm and I'm not going to bewail the fact along the way. I'm going to uh, be all right with it. At least tell myself that. <laughs> I'll be all right with just being me. I'll be all right with being on the 91 freeway right now. You know, pretty bad freeway, but it's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's a word game. Sometimes you're just telling yourself that. But, um... I know that sounds disingenuous. Oh, I really am happy to be on this freeway going to work. <laughs> I know it's going to be a hard day. Okay, so that points to the fact that it's not easy. It's not necessarily sincere. It's an it's a it's an act of will. Yeah, so there you go. It's it's a it's it maybe a bit of a, a bit of a lie to oneself, but it's a name. I genuinely am working towards that aim. I'm working towards being uh, being all right with wherever I am, and I can I can say that the exercise of trying to do it, of of, of, of working towards that, has an impact, it, and it is a good impact. Okay. Kind of got off on the weeds there, out of the weeds, but let's so uh, let's get back on it. Wow, that's bright. Uh, the next one is um, reason, the governing faculty. The ability to look at the world, gather the facts, create arguments that make up predictions about how the world really works, observe the world, watch, see if it actually meets those predictions, you know, the predictions match up, and if so, then uh, move forward. Uh, with Maybe you've got some understanding of the world, but cautiously hold on to those and continue measuring them. If the results don't match our predictions, then uh, maybe we uh, are off track, we better read. Re review our facts, review our, our arguments and, and ideas, and of course discuss them with others, vet them out. Okay, next is uh, purpose and the sub, uh, ver sub principle of virtue. If, it, if, it, if God and gods are in fact imaginary agents, then that means that uh, there is no ascribed absolute purpose. Well, maybe there is an absolute purpose in terms of life, if you look at biology, and that's to reproduce. Clearly, that's a, a mandate encoded within our genes. So there may be no uh, absolute purpose other than, other than that. This uh, cross on the hill is uh, an exclamation of, towards community and the uh, the uh, recommendation or the uh, what's the word? What's the word? It's the um, admonition towards collective social virtues recognized by the community of the Christian society that have weight and substance by virtue of the force of a mandate of God. Which is really just a bunch of made up stuff that humans came up with that are then put into that put into that uh, that model, that uh, that artifact, that, that model of uh, of human of human of human wisdom and best practice. Uh, enforced through the will of God is one that's been created by society after society, culture after culture, time and time again. We always uh, apply God as the big daddy behind it all, with the uh, to to to, uh, to to give it some force. So if that's if that's what that is, then why don't we just strip out the need for uh, and, and if it's false, then why don't we just strip out the need for. Uh, uh, a, 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 an invisible, almighty, all-seeing, omnipotent, omniscient, all the rest, uh, 
overseer and just come to an agreement that we're going to work on this together. This is a, a, a social project for all of humanity to work together to come up to a better understanding of what, what principles, what codes really are in the best interest of everyone and then work to uh, recommend and enforce those as we do now with, uh, in, uh, in um, secular social systems with the laws that we put into place and the recommendations and the social mores. So that comes around again to purpose. If there is no absolute purpose, then it's up to us to develop a purpose. And I think our, a lot of our societies, are, our, especially our more secular societies, are doing a, a really good job of that. I mean, it's not perfect, but they're getting there. We've had the last uh, 70 years have been the uh, 70, the most peaceful years on the planet. Uh, Well-being is, is increasing uh, dramatically across the planet. Goodwill between nations and human beings is, is, is an astonishing, uh, astonishing rise since, since the post-World War II era. Basically, the, uh, the, the principles of, uh, of our modern society and our, and our, and our, and our, our secular values, because they came first. You know, the values of the tribe. I'm sure the earliest, you know, the earliest human pro proto humans, uh, you know, wandering around the savanna, were developing uh, morals and mores that uh, preceded any the the, the uh, application of any god, the development of any gods. So uh, religions borrow their morals from the secular uh, reality of, uh, of of our species. So let's take those back. We don't. It's not the other way around. But the uh, the mask of time long drawn out think uh, mask of time can make it appear to be the other way but it's not and it's not and I'm not just saying that as a proclamation I'm saying it because it just just makes sense because the human beings are social animals and uh, we were social animals before we were humans we were social animals when we were uh, an earlier species of uh, of a uh, hominid like I said before and we worked as a cooperative group. We, the way that we succeeded as a cooperative group was we had rules that we followed that were that were beneficial for the group long before gods were created. That just uh, that just follows if you uh, if you look at the evidence of, of what our species was before our development of our brain, before the development of uh, our ability to uh, to invent gods. So that it simply follows that that the uh, values came first, human goodness came first. The uh, Giving those, giving those qualities by way of God came later. So, if you're going to have purpose, we better come up with it ourselves. It better be a good one that we develop by virtue of good communication, well thought out plans, a, a comprehensive education for as many as possible to understand the options out there. As for me, my purpose is the uh, is what I call virtue. What I call virtue. Virtue, as I define, is the uh, improvement of well-being for as many people as possible through the uh, uh, empirical, uh, uh, empirical, through the real-world uh, uh, improvement. Things like uh, clean drinking water, better sanitation, comprehensive education, affordable education, good health care, and better communications for communication between the uh, different groups of our society including the sexes. Wow, I was long-winded on that one. I actually thought I was going to finish this one quickly. You know, here I'm at 28 minutes. I better wrap up. So, um, haven't even gotten to the one I want to talk about. So, then moving up to, uh, 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 from purpose to, um, okay, so, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Temperance. Uh, agency and indifference. The best seat in the house. Reason, virtue, oh, the path of wildness, a way to break out of a rut. Assemble the facts, use some time to digest those facts as much as you have, as much as is reasonable to, and then if you still haven't made a decision, go with your gut, ready to make a mistake. Trusting that the fact of motion, a very active motion moving forward is a, is a virtuous thing and a good thing. Next is um, the risk of avoiding risk. Well, often in life we'll, we'll 
choose a life that we don't necessarily want to live to in order to avoid the risk of the life that we do want to live. But I want to ask, what risk are you assuming in avoiding the first risk? And I suggest that there is a, a very terrible, awful, horrible risk lying below the surface that a lot of people don't uh, seem to uh, identify that will consume you, will make you into a monster. If you, uh, if you don't address it. And that moves on to the next uh, principle, which is uh, sin and damnation. Sin is defined as, the, as living a life that's not in accordance with your nature. That doesn't mean that we all get to be ballerina dancers or, 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 or you know, Hollywood movie stars or actors or whatever the case may be. It's not necessarily just what you want to do with your life. It's living according to your nature. And you can have things that you do that and they're still living according to your nature. Like, it's not necessarily my nature to be a project manager. But I do this because this is, uh, this, this furthers my, you know, it is within my nature to be a good husband and a good father. And this furthers that. So you can have, you can do a job that isn't something you necessarily like, but to deny what your nature is uh, and to uh, live an, another life to avoid that is to, uh, is to basically bring on that risk that I was talking about. Thus then is the damnation. The damnation is to live the life, is to live a life surrounded by the consequences of not living according to your nature and it can be a pretty damn miserable life but the good news is that uh, damnation in a secular worldview is not forever that's the last second to last principle which is uh, uh, complete oblivion complete oblivion uh, uh, awaits us all and uh, I mean absolute utter oblivion and I'm not saying that as a proclamation that I know that was true but on based on the evidence that I've seen so far uh, there's no one has offered any good reason to think that any of us are getting out of this alive or that we're going to survive our lives in any way we are going to be wiped out uh, utterly and completely including our genetics will be wiped out as well within seven generations our family name as well and finally the last piece of that as well is get it's, it's just in parentheses is get the hell out of the way it's <laughs> part of your job to get the hell out of the way to make room for the young to come on board with their new paradigm and take your own damn paradigm to the grave with you it's not enough to toss your corpse into the ground before they start shoveling the shovels of, of, of dirt on there take all your life's work all your ideas all your inventions and for the most part throw those in there too um, the, the the next generations have very little need of uh, of of our paradigm. I mean, it's good to be able to reflect back on it. I mean, of course, the old adage, you know, if you're, you don't, the mistake, if you don't remember the mistakes of the past, you're destined to repeat them. Yes, that's true. So keep some records, have some memory of that stuff. You know, it's good to do it, but don't, uh, but don't expect that anybody's going to really give a damn because the, uh, the young, gen the generations coming are facing a world very different from ours. And yeah, there'll be a lot of similarities, but they'll, they'll figure that out. They'll have enough of a record for that. Don't expect anything that of ours to be uh, uh, to carry on. I, in fact, I hope that when uh, I hope that there's no grave for me. I hope that I, I'm lucky enough to die out in the desert. No one will know I'm there. Kind of, kind of could break that to my wife and daughter somehow and let them know that that's okay if I never come back. And I, I wish I would wish that everything that I create would, would 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 wither away out there with me, including this. Let the uh, let the new let the new let the coming generations figure figure theirs out. Education is good. Let them maybe maybe understand it. Some some record of it. Oh, but I don't expect them to, to abide this. And that's the point. I expect them to live to abide their own world. But so it's so a shadow shadow echo of this. I'm running out of time. I got to finish finish up. So that's the last one. I got to go real quick. Today's uh, thought plan to uh, compose my collect my thoughts before breakfast. Compose them over lunch, record them before dinner, and die before bedtime. I, my action plan is to get to work and be a diligent, hardworking person, industrious, not wasting time, not distracted by things, giving my employer better value for the time that they have me there than, 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 than they're paying me, so it makes it worthwhile to have me, that I'm a good contributing member of society, to go home, do my swim, do probably 30, 40 laps tonight, uh, go home, sit and, and, and earnestly look at my, my daughter, my wife and daughter in the eyes, talk with them sincerely, tell them both I love them, 
give the dog a nice pat on the head, take him for a nice long walkie before bedtime, talk to him, make sure that he knows I love him too, and then, and then lay my, my head down on the pillow and die. <laughs> and to never be remembered, to go to damnation, no, to go to oblivion, working to avoid damnation in the here and now. And in 35 minutes, I gotta wrap this up. So uh, the rotten day forecast, I'm gonna die, my wife's gonna die, my daughter's gonna die, my job's gonna die, my bank's, my account's gonna die, my reputation's gonna die, my memory's gonna die, my my health is gonna die, my welfare is gonna die, my, my, my best intent, my reason is going to die. I am going to uh, blather away into, uh, into uh, nonsense just before the uh, oblivion wraps its, uh, its, its darkness upon me. And that, uh, that dark, dark, endless eternity of nothing awaits. Isn't that a good way to start the day? Yeah, optimistic. <laughs> okay, only gets better from there until it doesn't. Take care, everybody. Have a uh, good life. Bye-bye.